Welcome to Food Safety for Food Service Employees, presented by Environmental Health Division of the First District Health Unit. There are eight parts to this presentation. You must watch all eight. This is part eight. Take handwritten notes for each part. Contact any FDHU office to schedule an appointment to take the test. To take the test, you will need to bring handwritten notes in your own handwriting, a valid photo ID, and payment in the form of cash or credit card. Floors, walls, and ceilings. Cross-contamination occurs when microorganisms from one food, like a raw meat or surface, transfer to another food, like lettuce or surface. Food contact surfaces are the surfaces of equipment or utensils that contact food. They can also be the surfaces where food may drain, drip, or splash back onto surfaces in contact with food. Some examples are cutting boards, plates, spoons, knives, forks, cups, bowls, pots, the inside of a lid of a pot, saucepans, prep tables, pizza oven racks, microwaves interiors, grill surfaces, Food contact surfaces must be cleaned to sight and touch at all times. You must clean and sanitize all of your food contact surfaces. Tableware and utensils must be cleaned and sanitized after each use. TCS food contact surfaces at room temperature, such as knives or cutting boards, ice scoops on counters, must be cleaned every four hours. Everything else must be cleaned every 24 hours such as non-TCS food contact surfaces and all other TCS food contact surfaces, such as iced tea dispensers, tongs used by consumers, ice scoops stored in ice, soup ladles stored in hot soup, cooking and baking equipment, like the inside of a microwave oven, pizza oven racks or grills, or any surfaces held at 41 or below, such as salad bars, make tables, and deli cases. Manual dishwashing is done in a three compartment sink. First step is to scrape off of any residual food debris. In the first compartment of the three compartment sink, you will wash your dishes in warm water with detergent. The second compartment is for rinsing the dishes in clean water. The third compartment is sanitizing your dishes. Air dry your dishes. Do not use dish towels for drying. Finally, you can store the dishes. Ensure that the dishes are dry before you store them. Invert or cover the dishes in a clean, protected location to prevent contamination. When using a three compartment sink for manual wear washing, ensure that the water being used is clean at all times. Sanitizing. Hot water sanitization requires surfaces to reach a minimum temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit. You will need a hot water booster heater to reach this temperature. When using chemicals to sanitize, always follow the manufacturer's instructions. The concentrations appropriate for chlorine sanitization is 50 to 200 parts per million. For quaternary ammonia or quat concentrations, you want your sanitizer at 150 to 400 parts per million or follow the label. Iodine to properly sanitize needs to be at a concentration of 12.5 to 25 parts per million. Always use test strips to check the concentration of your sanitizer. Other sanitizers may be used if they meet the specified requirements. The chlorine test strip on the top shows a chlorine concentration of less than 50 parts per million and thus too low to properly sanitize food contact surfaces. The chlorine test strip in the middle shows an appropriate amount of chlorine concentration between 50 to 200 parts per million that would properly sanitize food contact surfaces. The chlorine test strip on the bottom shows a chlorine concentration of greater than 200 parts per million, which would not properly sanitize food contact surfaces. 
There are many different types of quat sanitizer test strips. Ensure that you read the label to make sure that you have the accurate amount of quaternary ammonia concentration to properly sanitize your food contact surfaces. When using a mechanical dishwasher that uses chemical sanitizer to sanitize food contact surfaces, there will be chemical sanitizing pumps that must pump the appropriate amount of sanitizer into your system to appropriately sanitize your food contact surfaces. When using a mechanical dishwasher, make sure to scrape any dishes to remove any food debris before sorting and loading them in your dishwasher. Pre-soak any silverware and load trays so that all surfaces get washed and dishes can drain. Always operate your mechanical dishwasher according to manufacturer's recommendations. Mechanical dishwashers can use hot water or chemicals to sanitize. Verify that the water is hot enough or chemicals are at appropriate concentrations using thermal labels, thermometers, or chemical test strips. Mechanical dishwashers must be cleaned at least daily, both inside and outside. Keep the spray nozzles clean and unplugged and delime your machine as necessary. Dishwashing. You must wash your hands after working with dirty dishes and before handling clean dishes. Remember to store dishes in appropriate locations and not in prohibited areas like locker rooms, garbage rooms, under open stairwells, toilet rooms, or vestibules. Ensuring that your dishes are stored in the proper location can prevent contamination of food contact surfaces. When handling your dishes, ensure that you are not touching the food contact surfaces. Hold silverware by the handles, grab cups on the outside, handle bowls and plates by the outside of the dishes. Equipment, utensils, linen, single-use, and single-service items must be stored dry. Do not store these items while wet. Cover or invert them to protect them from contamination. Keep them away from or above chemicals. Keep them in clean, dry locations where there is no dust or splash and ensure they are six inches or more off of the floor. When handling these items, Use disposable gloves, keep single use and single service items in their original containers. When displaying tableware, ensure that all handles face the same direction and face the handles towards the customers to ensure no one is touching food contact surfaces. Straws must be individually wrapped or dispensed through a device that prevents contamination. Wiping cloths. Use moist cloths to wipe counters, tables, and cutting boards. Do not use them to wipe or dry your hands. Use separate cloths for food contact and non-food contact surfaces. Store cloths in a sanitizer solution. Sponges are never allowed in food establishments. Chemicals must always display the manufacturer's labeling. Bulk containers must be stored away from food storage areas. Working containers must be stored away from food storage or in a separate area below the food, equipment, and single service items. All working containers of chemicals must be labeled. Store different types of chemicals separate from each other, such as dish soap and Raid. General Cleaning Non-food contact surfaces must be kept free of accumulated soil and debris. All parts of a food establishment must be kept clean, including the floors and under and around equipment. Restrooms must also be kept clean. They must be stocked with toilet tissue and hand sick supplies regularly. Doors to restrooms must be self-closing and remain closed. Ventilation. Ensure that your exhaust hood is on before using any quick cooking equipment and regularly clean your exhaust hood and filter 
Replace the hood and filters correctly before using them. Trash must be removed regularly. Keep your receptacles clean and line with trash bags. Storage areas inside and outside must also be kept clean and must be inaccessible to insects and other animals. Emergency occurrences. Food establishments must be closed when there is a fire, flooding, including a sewer backup or failure, power outage, disruption of water supply, misuse of poisonous or toxic materials, onset or potential onset of a foodborne illness outbreak, or any other event that may result in contamination of food or that may prevent the proper hot and cold holding of TCS foods. Notify FDHU and then receive clearance prior to reopening. Animals. Pests include rodents, insects, birds, mites, weevils, beetles. Other animals include pets, service animals, lobsters, and shellfish. Code requirements. Animals must be excluded from establishment. Service animals are allowed in non-food areas only. Protect openings against rodents or insect entry by keeping your doors and windows closed. Ensure your doors are tight-fitting and self-closing. Make sure your windows are closed or screened. Drive-up and service windows must be kept closed except when serving a customer. Pest control may be necessary if you observe evidence of a pest in your establishment, such as observing a live pest, dead bodies, droppings, damage and debris, noise, prints, smell, feathers, smears or rat runs, fur, eggs or larvae. Here are some examples of cockroaches in a steam table. This is the end of part eight. For each presentation, a different part of a code will be given. Write down this test code and bring the complete code with you to take your test. The final digit of the code is nine.